Each day, 7 billion people rush to work. Many of them spend 10, 12 or more hours a day at work. It's the biggest part of human life. Only a few are happy at work. For most, it's a real labor camp. Man is a slave to work. He slaves away day and night, miserable but cannot leave it. After all, to break out of the matrix, it takes time and effort. And that's something you just don't have. Does this mean that slavery is inevitable? Good afternoon. My name is Michael Ribakov. I'm going to tell you how to build a harmonious and meaningful life. One where you will always have enough time for work, family, travel and other interesting activities. I myself have gone from office slavery to freedom. Now I'm doing what I love the most and combining it with a service to people. I spend six months of the year traveling with my family and conduct my business from all around the world. All of this you can do too. And this film will tell you about the people who were able to escape the matrix. Let's go. The starting point in a career for most people is salaried employment. For many, it's slavery. Get up at 7, sit in traffic to work for two hours, arrive late, and then daily routine until it's time to go home. In the office, the tyrant boss and the problematic clients tear you apart. More traffic on the way home. Repeat five of the seven days, week in and week out. Your first step to freedom. Imagine how you want to live. For something to appear in your life, it first must appear in your head, even if it seems unreal to you. Many people think that the ideal life is to lay under a palm tree doing nothing. However, most people after two, three weeks of such a life begin to climb the walls from boredom. This is Yekaterina, a Muscovite. She has for many years been an employee. Currently, she is the personnel director of a large holding. In salaried employment, there are some obvious advantages. Confidence in the future, a steady income, a clear work schedule, and... But the main thing that distinguishes Yekaterina from thousands of others is that she's happy to work and does what she likes. Very often in life, we find ourselves facing choices, standing between polarities, career or life, freedom or responsibility, family or loneliness. The main thing is to find that point where you are at absolute balance. Yekaterina found this balance and for seven years has worked successfully as an employee. But during the shooting of our film, she resigned from her well-paid, well-respected job. For her, this step towards freedom is a natural stage of growth. The company where I work now is a very harmonious one, very effective and very interesting. Just at some point, the balance of life versus work became wrong. I realize that I still have to live my own life. I want to reach for my own goals, not someone else's. Now I feel like I'm falling without a parachute, but at some point I understood that it's easier to jump than to continue with what I was doing. The transition to a new state is important. Her childhood and youth were spent in a rural part of Russia. All the upbringing that was given to me by my parents, a mad amount of love and an incredible amount of freedom. Do whatever you want and be responsible for yourself. And that's what I was doing. I grew up in a village in the countryside and I was doing all the work, milking the cows, planting vegetables, sowing seeds, well, everything. And I realized my soul wasn't in it. I don't want this. Deep down, my heart was not happy. I knew that I wanted something else. Lubov moved to the city. She worked as an employee. Then she headed up an advertising agency and became its owner. But even there, it was crowded. I sat down and thought, where do I want to be? 
Where do I want to go? I want to get into a major business where I'm in marketing. By selling her own business, Lubov consciously chose to work as an employee, as marketing director for one of the largest foreign banks in Russia, but where her schedule can accommodate time for herself for painting and figure skating. It's the enabling of awareness and what I do, why I do it, and how it affects the world around me. This is perhaps the one thing that is the key that moves me and defines my success. Working as an employee, you can learn a lot without risking anything other than job and your reputation. Select a company in which you want to work at least a few years and achieve who will be your mentor. Managers are always short of good workers, so if you're one of them, it will be appreciated. Those who don't like working in a team and to a timetable choose the path of a freelancer. Freelance, a lance for hire. Neither employees nor office. Everything you earn is all yours, both thick and thin. Running like a hamster in a wheel, simultaneously working and looking for new work. Keeping the books and other administration. Constant nerves. Accident in life and on the road. Now he's the servant of many masters. Determine how much time you want to devote to work. In the words of Steve Jobs, work with your head, not 12 hours a day. How often and how long do you want to go to the office? Perhaps part of the time you can work remotely and the rest of the time engage in other projects or just relax. An example of a successful and harmonious freelancer, Alexander. He works for himself. Nobody tells him what to do, what to say, what and when to do it. But unlike a business owner, he doesn't have the headache of employees who need to work and regular payment. The formula for financial freedom of the freelancer. Determine how much money you need a month. Then plan your time and work so that you can earn that amount of money in just one week. That way you will have three weeks to go away and look for clients, deal with hiccups and training and everything else. This one week should provide your income for the whole month. When we enter into business for money, as a rule, we end up not dealing with something we enjoy. And then we have a choice, either to carry on doing something we don't enjoy in order to make money, or to do what we want, perhaps when there is no money involved. But that's life, a contradiction becomes apparent. The ideal freelance life formula was found by Vladimir Yakovlev while studying long livers. Having reached 50, he wrote the book The Age of Happiness. Vladimir travels the world and meets people who, in spite of the common stereotypes, continue living a full, bright, happy and rewarding life at 60, 80 and even 100. Not a single one of these people works, and all of them like what they do. When asked about freedom, they all say they are self-employed. They aren't anyone's employees, and they don't employ anyone, they just sell their skills and abilities. They all go through a conscious rejection of competitiveness, opting for quality of life instead. They do it in order to enjoy doing what they do, regardless of what other people do and how they do it. There's a couple that I have photographed. He's 82, she's 70, I think. They travel the world, jump with a parachute. To celebrate his 80th birthday, he went to the airport and decided to jump 80 times just to celebrate his birthday. I tell him, are you trying to make skydiving more popular? No, they would respond. Are you helping anyone? No. Why are you doing this? Because we like it. Vladimir was not always a freelancer. As the father of the commerce and publishing house, he has the experience of being a big business owner. He also knows firsthand what it means to leave your own business. If we talk about worldwide trends, the world is becoming a world of craftsmen. People who do what they enjoy, and this is definitely the case. This is definitely the future. I'm sure about that. If you're a freelancer, become a real professional. This will allow you to choose the really interesting projects to work on, and only those customers who can pay the higher fees. Create a certain asset that brings you money without your personal investment. For instance, write a popular book. That's how many well-known actors, writers and musicians live.
In fact, there are very few people who truly want to be free. It's a kind of disease. Man is a social animal. He's a member of an ant's nest. An ant cannot be free. If left alone, he will die. But there are people who are infected with some genome to escape from the system, and very few are successful. For me, Tor Hedel has always been an example for me. Another example was Kusto. I understand that they also had difficulties. They also had to look for money, some sponsors. But this was not the most important thing. The main thing was that they turned off the main highway on which most people follow from start to finish. These people did what they were interested in. In this sense, our group, Time Machine, was also like that, because we've been doing what we're interested in for a whole lifetime. Nothing more. And Yelena is engaged in human health, both in body and soul. A Moscovite, she lives all year round by the warm sea, where visiting Russians learn a healthy lifestyle. I dream of a place where there is no money. After all, what is money? I dream about this time. Therefore, it is difficult to call it business. There is an exchange, energy exchange. A 60-year-old woman is sitting on the beach. We put on flippers, walk along the beach, and I say, what about you? Put on the mask. Look at the wonderful fish. She says, I don't know how to put on a mask, let alone swim. And when I'm convincing her to put on the mask, to hold me around my neck so I can take her into the sea, to gently immerse her so she can see the underwater world. And the world is more than she can imagine. Remember Anderson's ugly duckling, and that the world is bigger than she ever thought, much bigger. And coming to shore, she cries, then calms down. And I know what she's crying about, what she saw and how she's grown. And I wonder how she could not allow herself these things earlier. Unlike a freelance, a business owner builds a system in which other people work. However, it often turns out that both the owner and the business are chaotic, and the owner is the most unfree person in the company. Can't leave the business to anyone. Employees are lazy and incompetent and sometimes steal. We have to persuade or threaten. At home, crisis. He sees his wife and children only when asleep. So who owns who? I own the business or the business owns me. Decide how much money you need. The answer is as much as possible. Doomed to the eternal pursuit of the happiness that is always on the horizon. Most people make mistakes when evaluating the need for money. Overstate because of the dogma imposed by society, race and consumption, which actually has still not made anyone happy. Or underestimate because they don't believe that it is possible to make good money. Vladimir has come a long way from a Soviet engineer to the owner and director of a large-scale production. And like no one else knows all the charms of the life of a businessman. In 10 years, I've not had a single holiday. Really, the maximum that I was able to take a couple of times was two or three weeks at most. During all these years, it's an unending task. I did everything myself, actually. I developed the processes, designed the first program, because my education meant that I could. I've even been selling this furniture. I was the marketing and chief financial officer. It's very hard to believe. My working day began in the morning and ended late at night. Sometimes we had to sit around until after midnight. Bring order to your business. Develop a clear technology implementation and make it work. Bring order in the team, in the company. Create a team of competent people, loyal to you and your business. Usually it takes our customers two, three years to start up a business. But for a start, the owner must bring order in his own head, because business is always a projection of the owner's personality. 
The fact is that all significant changes begin from changes in the mind of the person who carries out these changes, right? And the extent of the changes depends on the extent of the changes in the mind. You can decide to change something in order to earn $100 more, or you can set yourself the bigger task of entering a serious global market. After many years of management captivity, Vladimir has built a business correctly and no longer needs to be engaged in the operational control in person. Now my team is well prepared for work. All aspects of the business are managed by relevant professionals. And now I'm right here. I can dive. In particular, I love diving, or often I go skiing. Now my life is different. But the restaurateur Andrew, a businessman who was born with a silver spoon in his mouth, it's all clear from the outset. I guess I was lucky because I knew from childhood what I wanted to do. I cannot say that I wanted to work in the restaurant business, but when I was six years old, I was sure that I wanted to be a businessman. It was then that I began to sell things on the street, chocolate eggs. I'd even swap toys for money. We've been working in the restaurant business where people's smiles are the main reward. Sometimes I go out, I have my own spot in my bar. We can have one and a half thousand visitors a night in our establishment and I stand in this place, watch as people dance and smile, and then I'm happy. Investors. These people are far less than employees, freelancers, and business owners. But not everything is going smoothly for them. They don't want to live in their own country, and living is not an option. The money is there, but there is no place to spend it, no decent facilities for investment. Salaried managers, non-professionals, and to show your money is dangerous. However, the correct investments do bring happiness. Veronica is engaged in investment, but it does not interfere with her family life. Veronica is a mother of five children. And for harmony with oneself and the world, she practices osteopathy, an intuitive treatment with hands. It was not an easy journey, because when the fourth and fifth children were born, we were just learning how to invest. It was pretty hard not to lose the idea and not plunge into the routine of things completely, but to continue our search and path. Our vision is that the time of development of big city skyscrapers is over. The construction market in a period of quiet because of something new is about to be born. And this something new is gradually being born before our eyes. We can see many people disappearing from the city to settle in the countryside. But any investment is a very risky decision, and any investment requires a certain courage and a certain state of mind. When everything inside you says that it is right, although the brain may be saying the opposite, and calculations may not show it either. The best generals are those who have personally come up through the ranks starting with the private. The same applies to investors. Harris was born in the Syrian town of Latakia. When he was young, he went to Ukraine as a military college student. He later enrolled in the Kiev State University of Economics and founded a company that produces and sells metals. He has worked as an advisor to the President of Ukraine on Middle East affairs and is one of the most influential businessmen in Ukraine. But that was not his true calling. I've proven that I can earn, but I've never wanted to spend my life looking for income. Money is not the goal. It's like gasoline. You drive to a gas station, fill up the tank and drive on. Money isn't hard to find, but it should never be the goal. Never. Any businessman who works only to accumulate or get money is a bad businessman. When I was 45, I left the office. I just left and I never came back. I freed myself and when I made the decision to close and pass on on many of my companies, 
I freed myself from the burden known as my own business. I was writing, going for walks and had lots of free time. And I was happy, I was free. I spent two or three years like that and then I started feeling that I should get back to doing something. Several years ago, Harris left business and politics, opened a charity fund, which invests in science, culture and art. We have two words in Arabic, karib and garib. They are very similar. The only difference in spelling is one dot. Karib means neighbor, and garib means stranger. It is easy to love thy neighbor, but it takes effort to love a stranger. If one wants to invest in his children, he has to invest in someone else's children and not in his own. Because investing is a field they are going to enter, and I'm not going to be there. Listen to yourself and trust your instincts. Understand people, because the success or failure of projects depends on them. The money you give is not to a business plan, but to a specific person. Live peacefully and graciously in order to hear subtle signals which are sent to you in life reporting the opportunities and warnings about the risks. Learn management techniques to assess for yourself this or that part of a business. Downshifting, a deliberate move to a more simple and quiet life, a lower level of consumption of material goods. But if it is an escape from the frustrations and failures of life, the downshifter eventually degrades. If you are tired and have no energy to work, take a break for a month or even a year. Change the scenery, relax, look around, and decide where and how to live. Downshifting can be salutary if it is chosen consciously. Horn from Riga. At home he was a star. From the age of 15 he appeared as a disc jockey in clubs. He worked in radio and television. He had his own dive center and travel agency. He was the director of clubs and restaurants. The success kept him dizzy, but eventually Horn tired of the excesses. I realized that if I stayed a little longer than a couple of months, I'd be dead. As my ex-wife once said, Horin, you're a terrible person. This was after a traffic policeman had stopped me, and after a short conversation with me, he burst into tears and left. At this point, I realized that I had nowhere to go. It is wrong for me to misuse the status that had been given to me. There was only one solution, for someone to take this status and power from me, but I did this myself. Now Horn is in his former life, busy and creative. He's filming an underwater movie and spinning reggae in a nightclub in Dobby. In short, he's doing a labor of love. I have been living for years in a place where other people work all year to save up money to come here for just 10 days. I don't see any sense in it. There's no logic, but on the other hand, I still shake their hands and say, you are very strong people because I can't do that. I do not know how. I'm not that strong. Some go away after many years of skilled and high-paid work. Andre was born in Moscow and became an international lawyer. For a long time, he has managed to combine his passion for free diving with work. But the hobby gradually won over and became his profession. For many years, Andre has lived in the hob as an instructor of free diving and teacher of yoga. It's likely that someone who is born in a city is destined for a professional career. However, someone from a village is doomed to a simple, maybe too simple, rural existence. Freedom is the possibility to choose your own path. Exactly as in life, for a city dweller, freedom is an abstract concept. Water gives me a sense of freedom that is physically perceivable. A real sense of the concept of space, of the concept of freedom, a thickening of the concept of freedom is something that water can give us. I think that's something you can devote your life to. It is better to choose a path that is going somewhere and not one that is going nowhere. The most important idea 
is not to escape the matrix or to escape the unbearable circumstances of life, not to run away from the city or from the metropolis, but to go for what you really want. Understand what you want to do. Great if it lies at the junction of what you like and what people need, and pays well. Many have been able to make a profession from their hobby. The philosopher Grigory Skovorda said in his will, the world was catching me, but never caught me. Such people do exist. Constantine travels, writes books, conducts radio and television programs. His life is an example of the destruction of stereotypes and finding inner freedom. We are all used to an artificially protective society. There's not enough going on in modern life for a man to experience enough risk. Not enough adrenaline, suffering, blood at least, which are all aspects of the natural state for a human being. Goethe had some great lines. Of freedom and of life he only is deserving, who every day must conquer them anew. Here our equities team is committed to all kinds of expeditions, often involving potentially dangerous activities. Crossing the Atlantic without food and water for 40 days, we sailed across the Atlantic Ocean without food. I did not drink water for seven days. The point was to overcome the well-established belief in the minds of people, the idea that without water people would be dead by the end of the fourth day. We decided to show through our own action that it's not true, that it's possible, although it is extreme, of course. It's hard to swim the first 35 meters under the ice, not because it's difficult to swim 35 meters, but because of the ice. It's hard to overcome a certain belief, a matrix in the mind that you cannot dive under the ice, that it's dangerous, it's scary and you will die. It's hard to do the first time, the second time is easy. Goltis, a traveler, photographer, coach of extreme survival techniques. While captive in an Iranian prison, where he found himself after a misunderstanding about being a foreign spy, he invented a way to restore and maintain health. Now he has helped thousands of people around the world. We are born free. Any system imposed from outside, it is already a matrix. Since being on death row, life has become perfect. Until one has gone hungry for three days without water, one does not feel the real taste of the water, nor does one appreciate what a blessing it is to drink. You've seen different ways. Which one is yours? I can't promise that it will always be easy. But I believe in you. You'll be able to do it if you really want to and are sufficiently persistent. We wish you success and happiness. See you beyond the matrix. To find the balance is to ride a bike, surf on a board, and so on. And then that's life, and then it's business, and then it's art, and then joy. I advise you to be open to be open to new ideas, new acquaintances, and generally anything new in this world. Then you will constantly evolve, move forward, and happiness will come. I am worthy in this life to get the prize. Why not? I won it in a fair competition. Be lazy. Do not try to work for your client. Learn to negotiate with him so that the client is working and you have helped him as much as necessary, and not a step more. In fact, for me, investment, this is what I do for my family, for others, and just for a better world. Everyone must do his favorite thing, that thing that you're willing to do without compensation. As a volunteer, this is what's important in your life. I don't think you have to swim against the tide or with the current. You must simply go to the right place. This is freedom. You work, you sell your business, and you think, at last, I'm going to wake up in a good mood. And when you wake up with the same bad mood you had, you understand that the bad mood 
had nothing to do with your old job. It has something to do only with you. You should live to enjoy everything everywhere. Then the logical conclusion of one chapter becomes the beginning of the next. I realized that I can actually do more than I could and what I had planned for myself. A completely different level. Just a whole different level. There was a clear goal. It was clearly formed. Also, there was a strong movement towards this goal. At that moment, when you go to the edge of the ice and jump, inspiring work really begins. You are here and now, in the heat of battle. That is it. You know you cannot go back. You must swim forward and do it quickly and gracefully. Each one of us is like a fountain. Everyone gives to him and he gives back. And everyone will want to give to the one who gives back the most. If you love and you are strong enough to give back, you become the strongest fountain. You get the best reputation. A man can develop in a completely different way by just giving. In order for everyone to love each other, so that each person sees the good in others, then his career will be given to him by the Creator on the plate. And then everything will turn out well. No big shot can make us do anything we're not interested in. And that's all there is to it. This is the most important thing. And if along the way something else turns up, it's a great success. It can start from any point, from the point where a person is poor and sick, from the point where his business collapses, from the point where a person is an employee, everything is bad, he's working from paycheck to paycheck, and that goes on loads. You can start from any point and correct your journey. I can say this for myself. I can say this about my friends. I can say this about my customers. Life is better than most people think.